right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And here he is on the other side of the Atlantic, Jacob Prash. How you doing, Jacob? Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you. Hey, man. Good to have you here, brother. And of course, um, I don't know where he's at exactly. Undisclosed location as of now. David Lister, he's on the West Coast. I know that. Yep. Up in Washington. All right. Washington. All right. It's uh, they say it's gorgeous, maybe a little bit warmer this time of year, but gorgeous nonetheless. And down We're actually the- having 75 degree days and 55 nights. It's just such a heat wave. Such a heat wave. Watch out. Some luck. And down the, down the freeway from my house. Jay, how you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Hello, everyone. Okay. And of course, down in down under, my dear brother, Davey. How you doing, Davey? Good morning. Uh, doing pretty good, thanks. Good to be here. All right, Saturday morning, we're ahead of us, and uh, we want to welcome those who are watching from different parts of the world, from Australia, New Zealand. It's early in the morning in the UK. Good evening. Hope your supper went well. And uh, here in the West Coast, of course, we're right in the middle of the day, and in the East Coast, a little bit in the afternoon on a Friday, people are ready to go home and begin their weekend. We wanted to make you uh, aware of a few things before we get started, as we welcome you from different platforms that you're on. We want to make some announcements in terms of Jacob's schedule, and he's got something that he wants to share with us. Go ahead, Jacob. You're going somewhere this uh, August, so take it away. From the 11th to the 21st of August, we shall be returning to South Africa, uh, a country that has seen better days, to say the least, but there are still a number of believers there in all the communities. And uh, we have a number of viewers and subscribers from South Africa. There's a memorial branch there. <clears throat> and Ebion is still an ongoing mission project in South Africa. Of course, like anywhere else with COVID, there was a long hiatus of not being in South Africa. But we have had a number of requests to go back there. And I shall be going there, Lord willing, on the 11th of August is the first date. We have the schedule coming up. We'll announce it. Briefly, it'll also be posted on the Morio Facebook page, the Morio.org website, and uh, a mail shot through Be Alert. Amen. And of course, Jacob's going to be there for 10 days, uh, 11 through the 21st. And, and Jacob, you, you're speaking in a couple of different places. This is this is a great part. So if you're if you're in one of these areas, uh Jan, are they see are they be able to see the, the the split screen right now? Yes, they can see the split screen right now. Uh, I will go ahead and give the dates real quick since it's on my screen. You got it, brother. Uh, Forgive my pronunciation. Blue 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 Fontaine Fontaine on Saturday the 12th, Sunday the 13th. uh, We have uh, the venue is the Ebenhauser Gemente. uh, And the address is 3 Kinnenworth Road. All right. On Monday the 14th through Tuesday the 15th in Johannesburg, we have the Andyberg Gemente at 17th Lolly Avenue in Northcliffe. Uh, on Wednesday, the 16th to the 17th, Port Elizabeth, the Collegiate Girls High School at Ivy Leaf Hall, Main Security Gate, Kestrel Street, Parsons Hill. And on Saturday, the 19th, in Cape Town, the Oakdale Club, 80A Bloomhoff Street in Bellevue, Belleville. And those are the venues that Jacob will be at. That's awesome. So about it will be posted on the Moria website and social media platforms. Yeah, so about seven, seven locations. So if you're anywhere in Bluefontaine, Joburg, Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, drop what you're doing, sell your shirt. Go get a go, go get an Uber. I don't know if they have Ubers there, and go see Jacob Prash there. So uh, that's going to be coming up. So it'll be exciting, Jacob. You haven't been there in South Africa in a, in a bit, right? It's been a while. Oh, up since before, well before COVID. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm sure glad that they'll be seeing there. And then, of course, Mike. Greetings to Mike, and uh, and greetings to the believers there. Uh, also, David Lister, you're not in South Africa, but you are in Washington State, just up north from here. And um, politics are no different, but you're there sharing and ministering to people. Uh, where are you at this week and where are you going to be this weekend? Uh, you're muted. Oh, we got David muted. Let's get him back on. 
There we go. Sorry. There we go. That's all right. I'm in Bellingham, Washington. This is the last two days of the drive. Uh, and we're then we'll be going back to Portland where we're going to get with a number of people that uh, for a last night on Sunday, get a final little get together, met some very interesting people and characters and and people that really, really desiring the fellowship that the don't leave till midnight, man. You know, they just don't want to go, you know, so it's just what I understand it, you know. So we're glad to do this. And so I'll soon be heading home. So prayers for travel mercies. Amen. Amen. So you've been on the road for a little bit now, right? A week and a half or so? 16 days today. Seven, uh, 15 days today. Oh, so it is two weeks, more than two weeks. So that's awesome. Praise the Lord. So don't don't miss David and uh and the believers are being very encouraged. So praise the Lord for that. And we also want to let you know not only uh does Moriel travel to different places, but we're also on podcasts. And uh just I'm gonna turn it over to Jay. Jay, you have the schedule for this uh this coming up on our podcast schedule found everywhere. And as I always make a joke, Jacob's in probably in more podcasts now than Joe Rogan, but uh you you can be the judge of that. Go ahead, Jay. All right. Well, for some reason it's not working, so I'm going to have to go to the actual PDF. Give me a second. No worries. Podcasts so, are very popular, actually. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, people prefer it because they can take it anywhere. And they can download it to their phone on their iPad. They can share it. Uh, lots of things you can do with it. It's a wonderful thing. And we endeavor to get more podcasts on the schedule coming up for the end of the year into next year. Jay, you got it? Yes. So uh, to begin with, I'm going to start, since we're almost done with July, uh, I'm going to start on Tuesday, the 1st of August. We have a Bible study with Sandy Simpson, 1 Corinthians 4. On Wednesday, we have Ken's Corner, episode 20, dropping. On Thursday, August 3rd, we have Jacob Crash's midweek Bible study, the book of Exodus, part one, introduction. You don't want to miss that. The uh, the Bible study for Exodus has been excellent, really That's excellent. Thursday. Yeah, Thursdays. I think it's eleven Pacific time. Jay's yes, Exodus. join us. Also, uh, we are posting the Zoom link on on YouTube now. So if you would like to join the fellowship, uh, Jacob actually lets uh, ask a few questions after the Bible study. So it's great Q and A session as well. Um, on Friday, August fourth, we have. Friday with Jacob, Preparing for Persecution, Part 4. On Saturday, we have the Weekend Bubble Study with Jacob, the Dagger of Sa- the Daggers of Satan. On Sunday, we have the Sunday Morning with Pastor Marco, the Book of Colossians, Put on Christ, Part 5. And then on Monday, this episode of Catching Up with Jacob will drop to the podcasts. Please no uh, make yourself uh, available. Yeah. No, Dwight, no, no doubt, quite a busy schedule on the podcast. And they're found, where can they find it, Jay? Uh, podcasts are on Deezer, they're on Amazon, they are on a- Apple, of course. Uh, you can find us on Spotify. Just look at, for Morial Ministries, and you will find a plethora of podcasts to download. Absolutely. So avail yourself of that. And download them and put them in your files and uh, and keep them sharing. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So we want to welcome those who are watching and those who will be watching later, those who are watching live on Rumble, those who are watching live on YouTube, of course, and Facebook Live. And, of course, we got Vimeo and we have Telegram and, of course, our flagships, Morial.tv, MorialTV.org. And, uh, of course, one of a, uh, one, one uh, platform that carries it, of course, is RTN TV. And that carries out as well. So um, lots to choices, but we're going to be going to uh, away from YouTube and Facebook on our backstage. And we're going to be talking about backstage on a couple of things and be very interesting, not only about Sodom and Gomorrah, but we're also going to be talking about uh, some of the world coin stuff that's going on, the CBDCs. And uh, uh, we talked about it last week, but as you know, it's uh, not that we talked about it and made it 
famous, but the world is uh, gravitating to this world coin and UBI. And that's a big, big topic today. So we'll be talking a little bit on that, but definitely don't want to miss backstage. We're not going to be on Facebook or on YouTube. So you're going to have to jump over to Rumble. If you want to ask questions, ask them in Rumble and we'll get Jacob to answer the, some of these questions that always been great. In fact, um, People love the question and answer. It should be its own. Uh, it should be its own episode. But anyway, that's a, a whole different story. Not that we want to add more work to Jacob. So let's get started. And Jacob, let's catch up. We're not going to be talking about a few things, but I think they're worthy to mention. Uh, the, the the fact that Fox News, of course, uh, have been caught donating, matching donations to Satanic Temple. That's part of their charity organizations that they love to give. But New Mexico government, the actual state of New Mexico here in the state, reportedly referring women to the Satanic Temple health program. That's bizarre, but uh, I, I wouldn't put it past them. That's exactly what they think about. And of course, our favorite, our favorite, well, now I should say ex uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Now, a new appointed role at Harvard, a role of censorship, like a censorship czar. So uh, she's a championing censorship. And we all know how that worked out in New Zealand. And those who watch in New Zealand, from New Zealand here, uh, can attest to that, can attest definitely to that. And, uh, Bill, we look forward to seeing our believers in Australia and New Zealand when we get there in November. Um, we're not going to be talking about what NBC calls the triple demic. A brutal winter say it's coming because we have a new variant and we're going to have to get shots for that. And, um, uh, you know, and, but we do want to talk about something that it is about as deadly as any variant. U.S. politicians, U.S. politicians. Jacob, you and I watched some videos of some pretty damning evidence that these guys are absolutely either out of their mind because they lost it. Or they're out of their mind because they, they're just such hateful group of people. I couldn't imagine any more hateful group of people or any worthless group of people than Congress. But at the same time, I also torn because I also know the Constitution and the reality of what Congress was supposed to be there for. But they vacated that a long time ago. McConnell, Feinstein, Omar, you name it. I wouldn't give you five cents or a bag of chips for them. But Jacob... Tell me what you saw and in, in your reaction to that. The first thing we see is the folly of geriatric politicians who are not exactly compass mantis or control of their faculties being animated by their political handlers of the party. We saw this this week with Mitch McConnell, a Republican. We've seen it consistently with Biden. Now, there are people of some age who are in fact, the control of their faculties, Donald Trump being one. It was interesting that the mainstream media and the political left were trying to say when Mr. Trump was in office that he was suffering early onset dementia, but he has shown no clinical symptoms of it, none whatsoever. Biden will not even submit to the tests. Hence, we see the dual standards and the hypocrisy. So the first thing we see this week is the reality of the first dual standard uh, we see is one standard for Trump, another standard for Biden, and Diane Feinstein is likewise. The woman is obviously losing it. The woman is obviously losing it. They have no capacity to fulfill their function, and other countries see it. Other yeah. countries see these, these elderly people being manipulated who shouldn't even be there. It is a complete and utter joke. It reminds me of the old men in the Kremlin in the last days of the Soviet Union. You know, people who are vestiges of an age gone by, who, who were always corrupt and who, who were there simply because they have always been there. I mean, Suslav, Brezhnev, Cherenko, Andrew Paul, all of these people, they were just a, a lot of old men from, from the Stalinist era who were left over who had power. Well, now you've seen the same thing in the United States. And again, two standards. And by the way, I'm not personally, I do not want to see Donald Trump be the next president, although I would certainly take him over Biden or Gavin Newsom or something. <laughs> but I I personally am no longer a Donald Trump supporter politically. But there's still dual standards here. Secondly, the second thing that we see, uh, can you imagine if a Caucasian member of Congress made the blatantly racist statements as Congresswoman Olmert, the radical Muslim, 
I believe she's an enemy of America. I believe she has no right to even be in the country, let alone in Congress. She I should agree. be denationalized and deported. She's a, reported to have married her brother to get her brother a green card. Married her brother. This woman is is is, is perverted, and she's not just anti-Zionist but anti-Semitic. But she can make those statements and get a pass. That if a white politician ever made those statements, they would be castigated, and rightly so. But because she's a woman, and because she's a Muslim, and because she's black, she gets a pass. Mm. Utter hypocrisy. Now we see this week, they're going again for further indictments of Mr. Trump and some of his staff. How can you try to impeach, uh, indict somebody for things they were already impeached for and found not guilty? Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is utter desperation. These are creatures of the swamp. They are swamp rats. They are the rats of the swamp, both Republican and Democrat. You have Republican swamp rats who want to preserve the swamp. I mean, Romney, obviously. Yeah. John Cornyn, Texas, is another one. These are rats of the swamp who are trying to preserve their contaminated environment. That is Washington, inside the Beltway. The mainstream media. They are swamp rats trying to preserve the swamp, and they detest anybody who will drain it. You're taking away their habitat of corruption and hypocrisy. <laughs> so they will do anything, including politi politi with political motivation, weaponize the judiciary for a political end. When you have a case with Hunter Biden, and now his father, where there is plainly, plainly indictable reason for full-fledged federal prosecutions of father and son. They want a sweetheart honey deal, easy way out, play it down, mainstream media ignores it, when there's hard evidence. That's right, that's right. But when it was with Donald Trump and they had impeachments, people who should, who should die in federal prison if there was any real justice, impeaching a president for something that never happened, a corrupt FBI that obtains FISA warrants based on material they knew to be fraudulent, mm. forgeries. No indictments or investigations of Hillary Clinton or John Podesta. Why are people like Comey not under indictment or Strzok or these other people? Why were they not indicted? Even Mueller, who's no friend of Donald Trump, couldn't find anything. Yet you had these ridiculous women on The View speaking about it as if it was a fact. You had Rachel Maddow speaking about it as it was a fact. You had Todd, Chuck Todd speaking about it as if it was a fact. John Scarborough speaking about it as if it was a fact that it never happened. But when you have something that definitely did happen, everybody knows it happens, including a serious federal weapons violation. Yeah. There's no indictment. There's a sweetheart deal. Sweep it under the rug. Forget about it. This is just corruption on steroids, hypocrisy mm -hmm. on steroids. <clears throat> and what troubles me is there's enough people who will remain apathetic and enough people who are still stupid enough to vote for corruption, to preserve the swamp. They're yeah. on the side of the rats. The rats want to preserve the swamp because that's their habitat. That is how they survive. And they don't want anything threatening their habitat. No, very true. Hey, hey David, uh, th th did you see Feinstein? You know, she's being told by her aide, just say yes, just say yes. And, and of course, McConnell's lost it, and, and, and he's 81 now. But the charges against Trump, as Jacob was talking about, what do you think about all this? What's your take on term limits on politicians, drug testing them? And, of course, what in the world are they going to do if Trump gets arrested, which could happen next week? <laughs> We lose David. I think you're muted, David. The only time we have seen term limits is when Congress imposed them in on the presidency. They'll never impose them on themselves. They love, once they get into the club, not ever being put out of the club. And so now you see people like uh, Feinstein, who has basically been controlled by her handlers for a number of years. And so I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't run again unless they have somebody else that they can put in there. But uh, it, 
I lost hope decades ago of considering term limits. It's always been like this. My congressman is the best. It's all the others that are the problem. And that's the way people vote, because those congressmen are bringing money into their districts and everything. So as long as money is the center of uh, of these things, uh, of Congress and power and greed, there there isn't any hope for for good politicians. They're handling her, telling her what to vote, got her in the seat till they're ready to to find the right person to replace her. And sit, like Biden, he's out of it. McConnell's out of it. You know, but they say they're fine. You know, whether they give them drugs, pump them up with new blood, I don't know what they're doing to keep them animated. But it is That's it's the right word. really it's sad. And and you know, and young people are saying we need we need the old generation to step away because you know they're ready for something else. But it'll probably be worse. Yeah, I was going to ask you this. Okay, you, you get rid of the McConnells, the fine singers. You just they're, they're they're older. They can't function. What's behind it? Omer, Talib. I mean, what's 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 the you'll, future? You'll get even more liberal because the young people want the liberalism, thinking that it brings them freedom, when actually it will bring them slavery. The slavery, yeah. Uh, Jacob, you got this sixty-page um, indictment filed by Jack Smith, who's a prosecutor, of course, yeah. and um, he's even uh, adding that uh, the, the, the to the defendant, the maintenance guy. You know, Carlos okay. Oliveras, de Oliveira. Uh, and it, it, I didn't even know what to tell you because it's so deranged. It's so crazy. Uh, it's basically what well, they got. They got him for alteration, destruction, concealment and selling of evidence. Um, what will happen if he gets arrested? I mean, I'm sure the media is going to be. Front Obviously, page. this is a case where you take somebody who. These things are not even within his brief. He was a maintenance man, a working guy. <laughs> and you bring these things against him that he probably only partially understands, does not see himself as guilty of anything, and his lawyers will advise him, they hope, to turn state's evidence, to give some testimony against Donald Trump as his former boss. That, that's the hope. It's This is... This kind of prosecution is politically motivated intimidation of 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 of, of a simple man, of, a, of of an ordinary person, of an, somebody who's not a professional politician. That's what it is. Um, again, but it reflects their desperation. The rats need to pre preserve the swamp. They have nowhere else to go. That's their habitat. Without the swamp, there'd be no reason to have MSNBC or CNN. Without the swamp, there'd be no reason, there'd be no raison d'etre for people like Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or, or Mitt Romney. They need the swamp. It's their habitat that's under threat. What would you do to protect your only home if you have nowhere else to go? Well, yeah. that's what they're doing. Yeah. And that is exactly what they're doing, politically weaponizing the judiciary for this purpose. Yeah. What would you think it would happen if he gets arrested, though? I mean, the people would react to this. I, I would imagine some form of protest would happen. I mean, this is this is by far probably the most damning thing that they ever done to any president. The Rasputin, uh, uh, Rasputin, <laughs> Rasmussen, <laughs> Freudian slip. The Rasmussen poll from yesterday said that most voters do not think it will make a difference. Hmm. The establishment are hoping it would make a difference, but they can only control the public to a certain degree. They can't control all of it. Hmm. Very true. Now, from one thing to another, right? So we're going to move away from the political swamp to something that the political you know, members of the swamp want to promote. And nothing like this have I seen. And it's, it's, I've never seen the fear mongering. Uh, these are some of the statements from the White House, from Biden, from the media. Hell on Earth. Test the limit of survival. Record heat ever recorded on Earth. Uh, of course, Biden goes to Phoenix and, and, and basically first ever hazard alert for heat ever done. And uh, he's talking about painting your roof white. He's, he's talking nonsense. But at the same time, he wants to 
uh, minimize the use of air conditioning. He wants to take away generators because it's a big issue with climate change. And this is the big thing now. Climate change, climate change. Look at the heat. Look what's going on. Record heat ever recorded. Other nations have done it. Australia think it's a big proponent of this, uh, especially Andrews down in, um, in, in, in Victoria. But it's where is this climate change hysteria going? Are we heading toward climate lockdowns, climate change lockdowns? Well, they would like to because it's like like the pandemics, they are means of political and population control. You can get away with things in evasion, in evasion of democratic process and procedure by declaring emergencies. Yeah. This has always been done with wars, with dog wagging, as it's called. It's been done with pandemics. Now they'll do it with the environment. It's just the government looking to autocratically and dictatorially seize power without any accountability to the electorate or their representatives by yeah. saying it's necessary due to a manufactured emergency. You mentioned Australia. Australia is largely desert. I've been there many times. I've been to Alice Springs. I've been I've been to places in Australia. Many Australians have not. That country, it's, it seems to me it's, it's mostly desert for a square mile. Not all of it, but most of it certainly seems to be from what I've seen. And I've seen a lot of Australia. Okay. United States. Well, the Southwest or Arizona. It's, it's a desert. S Southeastern California is a high desert. So when you get to Palm Springs, it's, it's this desert, the Death Valley. Um, <laughs> Death Valley. It, they call it Death Valley for a reason. Um, yeah. So let's look now at reality. I was in Eilat, Israel. I lived in Israel for a number of years, and I was in Eilat, not Israel, and I was in Ein Gedi, where King David hid from King Saul in the cave of Ein Gedi. You can see soldiers frying eggs. Um, with a bonnet, the hood of a jeep, <laughs> using the hood of a jeep for a skillet to fry eggs for their breakfast in the morning. It is so hot. You can get to be, if you can believe it, temperatures that can go to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. This happens in Saudi Arabia. It happens in much of the Sahara. It certainly happens in Israel. These things have always been around. Additionally, we cannot take their statistics for granted. They've lied too many times. We've had scientists being suppressed in, prov in, in providing accurate data. They've been told not to. You have not once but twice East Anglia University, which did the climate research and, and uh, temperature, environmental temperature for the planet research for, for the United Nations. Not once, but twice, lying, caught lying, deliberately lying. They present lies as if they were facts. The left is great at that. Not only the left, but certainly the left is great at that. Uh, we had something that this, I don't know if she's really that stupid or she's just that corrupt or both that Katanji Brown on the Supreme Court made some kind of a statement about the survivability of premature black infants in American hospitals if the doctors are also black. By taking one study <laughs> about one instance in, in, in Florida and making a template out of it. But when you look at the overall statistics, the survivability rate of black infants is just as high as Caucasians. I mean, they have no problem distorting statistics and interpreting them dishonestly. And they have no problem just lying. And they're doing that about the environment. Yeah. They all do it. They all do it. They lie about gender inequity in terms of wages. They just lie about it. They don't tell you that a disproportionately large amount of women getting university educations get degrees in things like gender studies or something that's useless. Not enough women go into high-tech fields or high-tech entrepreneurial fields where the, where the major money is. Some women do, most do not. But that you don't count that. You don't look at the reasons. You just say 
There's inequity in the labor market. Men make more than women. This is not. What about the reasons for it? Yeah, exactly. They just lie. They lie. They distort the facts that it's not just a distortion or a misrepresentation. It is a lie. And mm. lie they do. And lie they will. Yeah. Hey, David, uh, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, in the midst of all this, Biden creates a new permanent office of pandemic preparedness in response <clears throat> policy, which is crazy, long acronym, uh, basically signaling something may be done regarding, you know, heat waves, maybe another pandemic. Uh, are, are we heading that direction again? With I mean, it just seems like he's laying down the groundwork to say, hey, we got some problems. Now we have an office that deals with, well, it deals with masks, it deals with lockdowns, it deals with vaccinations. So maybe they're going to work in concert with the WHO and CDC. But th th this is, I don't think it's ever been done by any White House, any office. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, of course, they're getting ready. I mean, we've been talking here for a couple of years on the events that they've got planned for us as far as total lockdown of people from moving around the world for getting rid of planes, everything that everybody mocked AOC about early on on the environment, that's the agenda. They want to, you know, 15-minute cities. They want to yeah. have you a passport ID. All this is coming. So this is just, again, setting groundwork. Oh, we're being prepared. We know bad things can happen. So it makes them sort of look like, they know what they're doing. But just like Jacob talked about the East Angela University being caught twice for lying. Look, Al Gore's hockey stick of how hot it got. You know, that was a total fabrication. It, a lot of the facts there were debunked. Uh, a few years back, they said that the Arctic ice was was melting so fast and terrible. They sent a research ship down there, and all of a sudden it got locked into the summer ice, <laughs> and they had to get four different icebreakers to get them out. It was so yeah. thick and so widely caught. I, I, re I remember that because they, they actually said, and I think I have the article somewhere, uh, no more ice in the caps, uh, you know, the polar caps by yeah. 2013. No more ice yeah. from 2013. Their, their predictions are basically... If you have been following the environmental uh, lockdown, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to propose is basically they want to be able to control the people. And one way is to scare them to death that all these people are going to die from this heat. Well, you know, in the American South, we know in the summertime it gets hot, Man, you know, and you, you make provisions. But in the like just a few years back in Europe, they had something like six or 700 people die in one summer. Okay, well, where's the deaths this year? It's hotter, right? They say it's hotter. It's supposed so to be hotter, it doesn't, yeah. You know, one thing doesn't add up with the other thing. And again, it's just scaremongering to get people into fear. If you get people fearful, you can control them. And, you know, so make your plans. You know, there's... It's just these people are transferring wealth from our generation, taking it from the next generation and putting it in old people's pocket. If people were smart, they would get better thinking about environmental concerns. No, no, I, I wanted to quote something. This is from it's one thing when Biden does it and we all laugh at Biden and, and, and the crazy things he says. And he's trying to paint the roots white on people's houses. And he said that's going to cure it. Uh, but this is from the U.N. This is Antonio Gutierrez, the uh, United Nations secretary. The end of global warming, the era of global warming has ended. It is now global boiling. So they yeah. got little, uh, you know, little phrases like this. Right. And then you have uh, Ursula. Did he say that in his air conditioned office? <laughs> Pretty much. So the ones that he has and he doesn't want you to have. Right. Yeah. That, that's how it goes. But the U.N. is getting involved. UN is getting involved to make it a mandate climate for the whole world. And of course, the EU Green Deal that uh, we, we talked about it with Jacob for the for Europe, uh, President uh, Ursula von, von der Leyen, I think that's how you pronounce it. She wants to decarbonize all of Europe, decarbonize all of Europe. I, I don't know if she, if she means the UK as well, but all of Europe. 
and she wants this climate change green deal and 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 we can laugh about it and we can say these people are absolutely out, out of their mind but i will tell you this uh, young, talking to young people they all believe it yes i, I don't think there's not many younger people that, that obviously i'm getting older but my kids you know my kids their age their friends uh some a little bit older they believe that there's about 12 years and the world is going to end so they they're doing radical things they're chaining themselves to roads they're destroying paintings along the way they're they don't want to have kids uh because i've seen signs here in uh, california and texas you know, uh, make love, not babies, uh, not have population growth, you know, um, save the climate, you know, uh, have an abortion, that, those kinds of signs, because they don't want the population to grow. They think this is going to be detrimental to the world. And of course, they want to reduce population. That That's really some of their things that they've said. So, uh, you know, we'll start with David. We'll go to Jacob. They really brainwashed a whole group of people into thinking this world is going to end. The end of the world is here, so we need to. It's up to us to save the world. Um, Marco, I think Jay had something. Did you have something, Jay? You were putting you wanted to put in. So what I was saying is, uh, if you take climate change and you divorce it from reality, which is history, you can sell anything you want. the The truth of the matter is, if you look at the Battle of Monmouth on uh, in June. 28, 1778, if you read the his, historical account, there was a heat wave going through New Jersey where temperatures were above 100 degrees in New Jersey. And if you look at today's temperatures in New Jersey, the average between June and July is anywhere from 80 to 86 degrees. <laughs> now, if you if you don't know this history that there are heat waves and really severe heat waves in New Jersey, you would just assume that, you know, climate change was worse in 1778 when there's mm-hmm. no combustion engine, no factories, n- no mass pollution, no overpopulation, according to, you know, the, the frantic people. You know, it that that's what that's what they do. They give you data based upon doctor data that they have that is completely devoid of any historical context. And they mm-hmm. sell you climate change yeah and, and, and to the point where people are really making it's just kids are making decisions about life based on this the, this hysteria and the end of the world is here and of course it, it's one thing when you know we can joke about it and, and say how, how silly it is to believe that but they really do have these crazy ideas like dimming the sun this is from the white house that they want to take uh bill gates idea of dimming the sun and you know spraying stuff in the air Literally, the White House said, this, spraying stuff in the air, dimming the sun, and we have no concept of what they will do to food supplies, to the climate, to, to uh, food production. It is an absolute disaster, and literally, it will be absolutely lethal. To your point, Marco, um, what is that going to do to the millions of animals on the earth that, that uh-huh. you know use the sun for to to determine if they're nocturnal or they they work during the day to find yeah. their to find their food. Yeah. And, and it goes back to the book of Revelation, right? What Jacob was talking about last time about those who destroy the earth. Those who destroy also the earth. Revelation, a third of the day and a third of the night will disappear. That is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> now, of course, we're talking absolute nonsense, right? Because Yuval Harari has come out and said, there's nobody doing these things. There's no secret group or cabal that is really affecting the world i mean that, that is just nonsense he's a historian he's gay he is an israeli tel aviv resident so you gotta trust everything he says because he's yuval harari and he works for the world economic forum as their prophet uh, i want to play betterment. a video what's that for our betterment oh yeah yeah yeah. so i want to play this video uh there's back-to-back videos um i think yeah, i think we agreed to play this two videos right here just want to play harari There's one video and then we'll go to the next one and just listen to what he had to say. What are global cabal theories and why do so many people believe them? The global cabal theory, it has many variations, but basically there is a small group of people, a small cabal that secretly controls everything that is happening in the world. 
all the wars, all the revolutions, all the epidemics, everything that is happening is controlled by this very small group of people who are, of course, evil and have bad intentions. And this is this is a, a very well-known story. That it's not new. It's been there for thousands of years. It's very attractive uh, because, first of all, it's simple. And also it creates, it, it, it creates this fantasy, utopian fantasy. If we only get rid of the small cabal, we solve all the problems of the world, salvation. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the war in Ukraine, the epidemics, poverty, everything is solved just by knocking out this small cabal. Now, as a historian, the most important thing I can say about these theories, they are never right. Because the global cabal theory says two things. First, everything is controlled by a very small number of people. Secondly, these people hide themselves. They do it in secret. Now, both things are nonsense. It's impossible for people to control a small group of people to control and predict everything because the world is too complicated. All right, so that's what he says. Well, look what they do. Yes, when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains. And um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can and we measure your, your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel uh, how the people react um, to your answers. Uh, is it imaginable? That within, say, 50 years, people will literally be part of a network. All the bodies, all the brains would be connected together to a network, and you won't be able to survive if you're disconnected from the net because your own body parts, your own immune system, perhaps depends on being constantly connected to the colony, to the net. The new powers that we are gaining now, especially the powers of biotechnology and artificial intelligence, are really going to transform us into gods. Interesting. Jacob, let's start with you. Any thoughts on that and what they are doing and ultimately will be doing? Uh, where is it? Well, first of all, government is in possession sorry, of a potentially non-human spacecraft. Based on your there we go. First of all, Moriel has always warned about conspiracy theories, and we particularly warned about those who are referred to in Isaiah chapter eight, who attempt to make what amounts to conspiracy theories into a matter of biblical end time prophecy or 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 discernment we've warned about people like that and this element exists and they do discredit people who attempt to take and make an objective analysis of what's really transpiring in the world but isaiah says don't believe he doesn't say don't believe in conspiracies he says don't believe that everything these people say is a conspiracy there are conspiracies. There have always been conspiracies. There's never been a time when history was not infused with conspiracy. There's always been that. Um, look at our, our, our time. The mainstream media at the time tried to portray in the 1960s, after the assassination of JFK, they tried to portray Barry Goldwater as a war hawk who was going to get us into deep trouble in Southeast Asia and Vietnam. Well, that was what the media was doing, and that's how he was being portrayed. At the same time, McNamara, Lyndon Johnson, Hubert Humphrey, uh, Maxwell Taylor, uh, Dean Rusk, the Johnson administration, were planning to expand the Vietnam War into the imbroglio that it became without a declaration of war. There's always been conspiracies like this. There's always been conspiracy. Don't call everything a conspiracy because someone says it is. But when you have obvious, obvious evidence, you have to look at it. <laughs> now, let's look at what we just watched. Notice Harari, a homosexual from Israel, who's a professor of history, and he is not a data scientist. 
he denies the reality of cabals and conspiracies. But then you see him and you see Schwab, whom he advises, doing the very thing he says they don't do. <laughs> You've got to be absurd to pay attention to people like him. My concern is, as David Lister's pointed out, the young people, they subscribe to it. This is what happens when you have a school system and a teacher's union that's a political campaign fund for the Democratic Party and a school system that is not there to educate but to indoctrinate. That's right. That is not to teach people how to think but what to think. They believe in global warming which is simply a diversion away from the real issues of, of, of conservation and pollution, which are valid issues, it diverts away from that. So in order to divert away from the real issues of pollution and conservation, by looking at what China is doing as the world's biggest polluter with, with, with thermal pollution, to take focus away from that, we have to put the focus on us instead and talk about global warming. It's just a lie, but they've been hoodwinked by a school system. They've been brought up to believe it, and they've been brought up not to question. It's very much, you know, it's very much like the Soviet school system, which was basically there for reasons of propaganda and controlling the minds of youth. The Hitler youth were the same way. You had the Hitler youth, you had the, the Stalin youth, and now you have the <laughs> Biden Obama youth. Um, it's the same thing. It's, it works the same way. Uh, that That is the reality of it. Um, if somebody was taught how to think instead of what to think, they would say, wait a minute, why did we not have epidemics and pandemics like this before? Why do we need these new regulations and suspension of democratic freedom to cope with a pandemic? Why weren't they around before? The last one was the Spanish flu in the early 20th century. That killed a lot of people. But medical science and immunology was not nearly as developed as it is now. Uh, why didn't it happen before? But in order to arrive at that conclusion or even to ask that question, you have to have been trained how to think, not what to think. <laughs> the propaganda machine of the education system in league with the mainstream media and, and government and the White House, the liars of, of the White House, is if you question this, you're unscientific. You're denying the scientific reality. No. They're denying the scientific reality that, just like El Nino, you have normal normal changes in weather that yeah. are cyclical. They are ignoring the scientific reality of X and Y chromosomes. They, 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 they are ignoring scientific realities in genetic science and environmental science. Um, but they're telling you you're not scientific. They did the same thing with Darwinism. If you don't agree with Darwinism, you're not scientific. But they will not look at the fact that there's no transmutation of, of nucleic acids <clears throat> across the genus barrier and the natural environment. You're not allowed to, to know how to think. You have to be told what to think. It is our worthless education system. And that goes from the neighborhood public school or state school in America all the way up to Ivy League institutions. This is the problem. Mm. The children, the youth are taught what to think, not how to think. They're indoctrinated, not educated. And the media keeps people stupid. That's the main purpose of mainstream media, is to keep people stupid. Hey, uh, Marco. Yeah, go know, ahead, David. One, one thing that I see that the Democrats do on all this is virtual sig signaling. They try to say, oh, we're doing this for the common good for everybody. But behind their scenes, everything, all their plans are for evil. And and people can't distinguish. It's like when we're told to watch out for wolves as Christians. We're supposed to reach a point in our Christian life where we're mature. We're able to distinguish between good and evil and right and wrong. But the world is totally lacking in discernment and don't even though they're getting fooled over and over and over again with the same virtual signaling uh that this is for your benefit this is for your good this is for the common good but in reality they're doing what is evil 
and mm. people can't distinguish, can't discern. No, and no, they led to the slaughter. Yeah, they can discern, and for the most part, you know, David, you brought up the the, the believers and how we're supposed to discern, um, and and obviously the believers are the only ones that can discern spiritually what's going on in the world. Uh, question to Jacob, and then we'll go to David. Has the church completely lost its relevance in terms of being salt and light on the earth because people just fall for anything? Right now, there's really no no restraint in in society in terms of you know how to think critically, how to look at things spiritually, how to uh, you know just even logic or even restraint of evil. Uh, uh, Jacob, we'll go to you first. What's the church worth now? Church is worth what Jesus said it's worth. Nothing other than to be trampled underfoot. The salt has lost its taste, and the light has all but flickered out. And we're not just talking about the World Council of Churches and the Vatican and the Papacy, etc. Those things have always been theologically and spiritually bankrupt. Mm. I mean what used to be called evangelicism. The mainstream evangelical denominations are nearly as bad, and in some cases just as bad. It's over. It's over. The future of the church will be the faithful church. It'll be ultimately an underground church awaiting for the return of the Lord, and in the meantime, busying itself with hastening his coming, because nothing else is going to stop this. But that's not to say that I do not believe that we should vote and pray and so forth. We should. But the way it's going, it has gone too far. We have crossed the Rubicon. We have crossed the point. Western civilization has crossed the point of no return. There is nothing going to reverse what has transpired and the consequences other than the return of Jesus. So we're talking American church has no cultural influence uh, in England, in Europe. I mean, you, you went to Europe. Look at and Stephen Furtick. What would anybody in their right mind think of somebody who says, I am God Almighty? <laughs> uh, Look at David, Andy Stanley, someone who denies the fun. He's a Marcionite. He's a theological Marcionite. Yeah, that is true. Even unsaved people know these people are crazy or that they're crooked. Yeah. Uh, the, the the major pastors in America, by, by ranking, it, I think it's Andy Stanley, Joe Olstein, Rick Warren, Stephen Furtick, top four. I think there's a fifth one, might be another guy in Virginia. But these are the people that are looked upon as leaders of the church and influence society with the gospel and righteousness. What they are leaders of a corpse. Yeah. The real body of Christ are increasingly people meeting in homes and small groups and relating to other groups who meet online and things of this nature. There is less and less place for true faithful believers who love Jesus in denominational churches. That is even more true in Great Britain and Europe, but it's certainly true in the United States as well, and Australia, and New Zealand, and Canada. Yeah, when David, you're up in that, yeah, you're mm -hmm. up in the Northwest. What do you? I mean, what do you see? I mean, you gave us a little bit of a report last week, but is there any cultural influence? I mean, even even minimal. The churches up in the Northwest. Well, I went through. Uh, Mia and I, her son, walked through a lot of the towns down here before the meetings and things, and and the culture. If there's a cultural influence, it's on the liberal left. On everything everywhere it's churches the united methodist churches there were into black lives matter love is love every wicked thing that could be brought there is residing there and welcoming everything in the church this was many churches there pride flags everywhere and and you see people walking around that that just they they're oblivious to it witchcraft of five you know the pentagon uh, they had a pentagon a pinnacle uh theater pentagram, just, pentagram. Just, pentagram yeah everywhere you could go um that uh, it's just there's no good when the salt has lost its saltiness it's only good to be thrown out and trampled underfoot and, question yeah here's a question Okay, so the, the American church seems to be informed in terms of we have much information. We have lots of Bibles. We have lots of research. We have lots of commentaries. And it should be prepared for 
the cultural battles that we face, the, the spiritual battles that we face. But why isn't the church addressing any of the issues? I mean, we're talking largely silent by pastors. They don't even want to talk about the issues that are, are prevalent and, and real relevant to society in terms of sexuality, in terms of uh, creation, in terms of righteousness, in terms of the love of God. Does God even exist? That kind of questions that people may have in society. Jacob, why aren't they even unwilling to address it? It's all about feel good, you know, cast the demon out, that kind of stuff. Jesus gave us the answer to that question as to what the last church would be like. It's something that I wrote a book about. It's something that others have spoken about well before me. And it's something that Moriel has had as one of its basic guiding principles. Why? Here is why. To the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God says this, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, affluence, and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. You do not know that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Watch Kenneth Copeland for two minutes if you can avoid vomiting. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich, as God counts riches, and white garments that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame, the disgrace of your nakedness, not having the garments of salvation, may not be revealed. And I solve to anoint your eyes that you may see. Remember, Laodicea's problem is it doesn't know it's Laodicea. It is spiritually blind. The last church is spiritually blind. They are blind. They cannot see. And the reason they cannot see is because they would not see. Right. Yeah, exactly. Any thoughts on that, David? I'm going to move into the next uh, subject. But yeah, just, right. just real quickly, the millions upon millions upon tens of millions that are in churches today are following false teachers that are blind, and they're both going into the ditch, and mm -hmm. they don't even know it. Like, you so right, Jacob, on the yep. blindness that's happening. They can't even see. Because they would not, they would not be. They, well, there's be none bad. so blind that those that don't want to see. That's right. That's right. So Jacob wrote a whole book on it, the dilemma of Laodicea. I think we got some videos on it. Um, I think we're going to post one of them on Tuesday. So great point, Jacob. And 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 I wanted to bring this up because of just some of the major major deceptions that are coming in the world and are coming to the world. Uh, happening already, but coming to the world. And the church won't be able to discern, but won't be able to lead anybody to righteousness, as Daniel chapter 12 talks about. Uh, we ought to lead people to righteousness. And, and this is by far probably the most outlandish things that I've heard, but this is this is what's happening now. Uh, according to a whistleblower, he is, a, uh, of course, an uh, intelligence officer, uh, testified before the Congress, before the House Oversight Committee, that not only are UFOs real, but basically under oath, we have the government has non-human bodies that have been recovered by the government from crashed crafts. This is not an episode of, you know, some sci-fi series. This is legitimate. This is before a House of Oversight Committee. David Grush testify. They have them. They're biological, non-human um, this is, of course, on top of what the Pentagon said, what other Congress hearings have said, that the UFOs are real, that we have them. Now, this is about to make every every conspiracy theorist and sci-fi uh, you know, devotee go absolutely crazy. See, I told you so, I told you so. But it also creates a big problem. If there is a revelation of alien life of some sort, uh, which will obviously be the ultimate deception, uh, Jacob, what are we up against here? If the governments of the world, plural, come out and said, yes, it's true, we have them, we did it, and we have to rethink the way our society and creation, not creation, but uh, our, uh, the beginnings of humanity. I was not the only one and probably not the first one. But since the 1970s, I have been warning 
that extraterrestrial phenomena are going to be something that the Antichrist and false prophet are going to use to deceive the nations and even much of the so-called mm. church. I have been warning about this since the 1970s. Mm. There's no doubt these signs that he's calling down in the heaven, the scriptures tells us it'll be just as it was in the days of Noah. Oh. The final straw that broke the camel's back was the Nephilim when they procreated with human women. Now, I know there's conspiracy theorists saying all kinds of crazy things about the Nephilim. I'm just looking at what the Bible says and what Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah. Yeah. You are going to see what you already have in Satanism, sexual mm. conjugation between the demonic and the and 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 the corporal and the human. Okay. This takes place in satanic rituals and worship where you have surrogate sexuality with demons and things of this nature. This went on in the ancient world where animals like goats were consecrated to demons and and, and this yeah, happened like in can, can worship, yeah. and worship, other things yeah. that this has always been around, but you're going to see it in the last days in a way that we've never seen it before. I am absolutely positive since the 1970s that extraterrestrial phenomena is going to be part of the great final deception. Jacob, quick question on this. Do you, how do you feel when, when you say that, that you've been talking about this and warning about the 1970s in terms of vindication? Uh, I mean, there's not a, a huge victory in terms of how you feel about it, but it, 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 I, do you feel like, look, I've been talking about this and the church doesn't listen. What's your take on this? Yesterday was Tisha B'Av. When you read what Jeremiah wrote in the Book of Lamentations on Tisha B'Av, that all of his warnings happened, he wasn't going around saying, I told you so. <laughs> if you read Lamentations, he's lamenting. Yeah. This never should have happened. Mm. I think we need to be more like Jeremiah than blowing our own horn and self-vindication and saying, I told you so. People know. People knew Jeremiah told them so. He didn't mm -hmm. have to say that. And I think those who've told the truth are going to be vindicated. Yeah. Um, and I'm not speaking only about myself by any means. Yeah. I Church history is filled with people who foretold the future, what would happen to the church. J.C. Yeah. Ryle being one of them for the Anglicans. Charles Spurgeon being one for the Baptists. Um, John Wesley being one for the Methodists. Everything oh, that these, these saints of God said was going to happen to the denominations that they even were instrumental in either founding or leading have happened. But there's no need for I told you so's. Yes, they did tell us so, but that's obvious. <laughs> a matter for lamentation, not a matter for self-vindication. Yeah. Very good. Hey, uh, Marco, David, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just um, Look, Jacob and I grew up, and one of the things we always said is don't trust the government, you know, because they're probably lying to you. Now I trust them even less. Even I didn't trust them then, but, you know, look, I could easily see. I've seen fake meat being grown, grown in Petri dishes. Yep. So can something non-human be grown and made as a prop as alien um by mixing whatever yeah yeah you know i don't know what science can do also non uh i know that they're mixing metals and all sorts of different things today because of advanced research so they could produce something and say it's this that this is not um, um human technology uh you know, so I, I just don't trust. I'm going to keep trusting in the Lord. And uh, I, they can produce their stuff, but I just don't trust them. You know, and I would question authority. Uh, we used to say, Jacob, don't trust anyone over 30. Now we don't trust anybody under 30. Right. <laughs> uh, just final thoughts. Uh, we're just coming down to the end of catching up before we move to backstage. Uh, just the subject of Israel and the nations. Jacob, you just did a, a video on Tisha B'Av that's going to come out in, in a couple of days um, regarding Tisha B'Av. But Israel marks the saddest day in their calendar. This is according to the rabbis, uh, basically the ninth of Av. And, and they have this uh, morning by a and they have a 25 hour fast. 
And uh, before people watch the video, can you give us a preview of what you talked about just very quickly, a synopsis of what Tisha B'Av is, why Israel uh, should we pay attention to this? Because I want to tie it into what's really happening in Israel now. Sure. The Babylonians destroyed the first temple in 585 BC, as predicted by Jeremiah on Tisha B'Av, the ninth of the month of Av, which by the Hebrew calendar we are presently in. The Romans destroyed the second temple in 70 AD, according to the predictions of Jesus and Daniel, on the exact same day, bearing in mind that Peter, in his epistle, associates Rome with Babylon. She was in Babylon, greets you. So both temples in 70 AD, 585 BC, were destroyed on that day. It is a day of loss of Jewish religious significance in their thinking when their houses of worship were both destroyed that day. However, a number of events in both Jewish and global history took place on Tisha B'Av, bearing in mind it goes by the lunar calendar, not the solar calendar or Gregorian calendar or Julian calendar. Um, the Jews were expelled from England in 1290 on Tisha B'Av, not by any design of the king who kicked them, of King Edward who kicked them out, but it happened to Shah Ba'av, the Jews were expelled from England. The Jews were expelled from Spain, launching the Spanish Inquisition in the end of the 15th century, to Shah Ba'av. World War I and World War II in Europe both began on to Shah Ba'av. It is a day of tragedy. Some of the greatest tragedies in Jewish history, but in human history, have commenced that day. On the teaching that we did, we did it on RTN on, on Word for the Weekend. It'll be out tomorrow night on Word for the Weekend, and it'll be out after that on Moriel. I apply what happened to Israel and the Jews on Tisha B'Av to what's presently happening in the Western Church, most particularly in Great Britain at the present time, due to certain constellation of events transpiring in the United Kingdom. So that is it. It'll be on Moriel in a few days. It'll be on RTN tomorrow. And it's Tisha B'Av, 2023, United Kingdom, Great Britain. Very good, very good. So get a hold of that. Uh, it's speaking of uh, Israel and what happened then, but what's happening now. Uh, Jacob, real quick, I know we got to finish uh, catching up. Uh, many headlines. Israel's on the brink of civil war. Uh, this is only the beginning. Mossad chief warns that he's not going to, you know, he's not going to be on the wrong side of history. Heart condition for Bibi. He's had to have surgery, cancel some trips. He's meeting with Xi uh, of China pretty soon. They got the Abraham Accord led by Jake Sullivan putting pressure on Israel. Uh, all that happening within the Tisha B'Av season. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to say it's not coincidence, but this is something that's going on in Israel now in the brink of civil war. There's no trust in the government. Judiciary reforms have been passed on, on Monday. Uh, we'll turn it over to you, encapsulate that, unpack it. Uh, tell us what you know. Shabba Av also launches a 40-day period leading up to the high holidays and the month of Tishrei, which is when Rosh Hashanah, as it's called now, the Feast of Trumpets, mm. followed by the Days of Awe and Yom Kippur take place. All of these things have important prophetic meaning scripturally for the return of Christ and for the future of Israel relative to the return of Christ. But what you see happening in Israel right now, it's not just that it's happening at this time of year, as you correctly point out. You see the Biden administration or the Joe Obama administration building on the achievements of the Trump administration. It was Eric Kushner who negotiated the Abraham Accords, and now Biden is building on it. He's so happy to denounce what Trump did until it's in his perceived political advantage to build on. Of course, it. of course. Uh, absolute <laughs> hypocrisy. It's it's like when Barack Obama tried to take credit for killing Osama bin Laden, when in fact he denounced Bush, and I didn't like Bush, but he denounced Bush's policies uh, in, in foreign and defense matters, only to reappoint Bush's secretary of defense as his own secretary of defense, a Republican, <laughs> after you run against Bush and denounce what happened in Iraq and so forth, and the way Bush is handling the war on terror, you reappoint Bush's <laughs> secretary of defense and most of the counterterrorism team of the Obama administration were the same people in the Bush administration. And then he takes credit for it, of course. Uh, again, he, a hypocrite among hypocrites. But 
this is what's happening. They build on something that they didn't plant the foundation for and expect you to ignore that they are building on something that the Trump administration achieved. Now, I always raise the caveat of the Abraham Accords because the Antichrist will bring a false peace to the Middle East and it will use a combination of religion and politics and economics to do it. So the Abraham Accords can be seen as a good thing with temporal eyes, but it is, a, it is a sinister thing when seen with scriptural eyes. Be that as it may, let's look at what's happening. The Biden administration has taken sides in the internal affairs in Israel. They are backing the Israeli left against Netanyahu. They yep. wanted to Netanyahu and Israel what they want to do to Trump in the United States. Same game, same devices. It's a Biden administration interfering in the internal affairs of Israel. One of the key players in this will be Ehud Barak, former mm. prime minister. Ehud Barak will be one of the people looking to depose Netanyahu. Um, but that is what's happening. It is American interference in the internal affairs of Israel. Uh, I can see why America would interfere in the internal affairs of a hostile nation. But why a friendly nation? Um, Israel means America no harm by any means. Nonetheless, there is an agenda, and that's what the Biden administration is doing. Jake Sullivan cannot be thrown, trusted as far as you can throw him. <laughs> that man has no integrity, no integrity diplomatically. He's the national security advisor of the Biden administration, and he is no friend of Israel. Mm. In fact, I would go so far as to say he's no friend of the United States, but he's mm. certainly a friend of Israel. This is what is happening. Now, he, he's, they're dealing with the Saudi peace deal, which is a very interesting deal. It's based on the Abrahamic Accord with some Israeli-Saudi normalization deal, economic deals and stuff like that. But it's got some interesting things. Saudis want nuclear a nuclear program. They want to be over, you know, oversight by the United States. the The United States wants them to stop the Yemenite war. They don't want to fight against uh, against Yemen to just let them be. Uh, th this is uh, quite a bit that the Saudis are asking for. Not only a nuclear program, but more advanced weapons by the U.S. In exchange, the U.S. wants the Saudi Chinese uh, connection to stop. And of course, Israel wants to build on the West Bank, which is completely against the Biden policy and administration. They even thought about, you know, changing some of a, you know, long story, but the portions of Area C to be transferred to portion yes. of Area A and all that stuff, which gets a little complicated if you don't know the, 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 what's going on in the West Bank. But is this a deal that the Biden administration is going to force down the throat of Netanyahu saying, Take it or leave it. We're making this deal with Iran, with the, not Iran, but I guess Iran will be the big winner with the Saudis. They will not be able to do anything in terms of a rapprochement between the Saudi Arabians and the Israelis without Israel, obviously. So, therefore, as long as Netanyahu is there, Biden yeah. is not going to get what he wants beyond the limited point. <laughs> therefore, he wants to get rid of Netanyahu. That's right. That's, basically That's right. what it comes to. Now, let's go back to the Saudi side of the equation. The Saudis are playing China against America. They feel abandoned by America. Not that we owe the Saudis anything. But the war in Yemen is a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. It is a war between Sunni and Shia. And the Saudi Arabians don't trust the Iranians, despite the cessation of hostilities negotiated by China. They don't trust the Iranians. They know they can't. And it goes back too far back to the 8th century, to the Battle of Karbala. It's not going to end. Um, so the Saudi Arabians are playing politics and biding their time. They do it with oil production, how much they produce. They do it with cooperation with, with Russia, with China, with anyone else. The Saudi Arabians have certain interests with the Israelis a common enemy in Iran. And Israel is the most powerful country in the Middle East. Second, the benefits of Israeli high tech. Remember, the Silicon Valley of the Middle East is Israel. Um, the area, some of us are in Haifa around the Technion, but most of it is north of Tel Aviv and Herzliya. There's a high tech belt. That is the Silicon Valley of 
the Middle East. To build the city of Neon and to make an alternative source of, of commerce and revenue to oil in the long term, the Saudi Arabians definitely see an advantage in negotiating commercially with the Israelis. That is another consideration, and it's not being talked about enough, but it's certainly a factor in the thinking of both the Israelis and the Saudi Arabians, the city of Neon, which is to be built exactly, almost certainly, where the real Mount Horeb was, where the Ten Commandments were given to Moses. It's, yeah. <laughs> The what they have plan is really interesting. Yeah. What they have planned for that city yeah. is the whole well, the geography. Of the geography is of of spiritual and theological significance. Absolutely, okay. that that is another factor. Um, the House of Saud is in a precarious position. The Wahhabists are in a precarious position. There is a reaction against Salafist Islam, ultra fundamentalist Islam. Saudi Arabians are trying to balance a lot of things. Um, MLB is trying to negotiate, juggle several things at the same time. But what they really want, what the Saudis really want in order to decouple from China and Russia and to put it back the way it had been, was in, in terms of Saudi American relations, what they really want is the following. They want Saudi Arabia to have the same status as Israel, mm. as non NATO ally of the United States. They want to be treated the way the Israelis are and have the same status, not just functionally, but they want it engraved in some kind of a treaty, ideally. Interesting. Yeah. The closest yeah. person to achieve that um, was Anwar Sadat. Hmm. Before, yeah. They in, Cape, in, in, in Camp David, they had some kind of, of negotiated uh, equity in terms of... Uh, military and economic assistance to both Israel and Egypt. That was part of Camp David. He came the closest to, to getting anything like that. Mm. Um, but let's look a bit further. Um, what is also a factor is the outcome of the West Bank. Israel has a growing population. You can't put all these people on the Negev. They have to be closer to the sea, to the ports. They have to be closer to the metropolitan areas, which is Tel Aviv, Haifa, et cetera. Um, there's going to be further Israeli expansion into the West Bank for no other reason now, other than they need the space and you've got to put the people somewhere. Um, Ehud Barak offered the so-called Palestinian Arabs a state on the West Bank where the Israelis would keep a small amount of settlements and give 3% of Israel's own land in exchange. Wow. With a compromise on Jerusalem that East Jerusalem could be their capital. And Arafat turned it down. Mm. And went to bombing bus stops and bus stations and shooting at school buses instead. Even Barak, Ehud Barak from the left, offer the Palestinians another state in addition to the ones they already de facto have in Gaza and Jordan. Right. Let's remember, they're already, in de facto terms, two Palestinian states. They were offered a third one, and they turned it down by the Israeli left. What Biden and Sullivan are doing, thinking that they're going to change their mind, is ridiculous. <laughs> they're not going to change their mind unless they had some kind of major economic impetus, such as Saudi Arabia. Yeah. But they have to get rid of Netanyahu. Yep. I think that's that's the writing on the wall, if I want to put it in, in biblical terms. That's what the writing on the wall shows. Uh, interesting stuff. So as we're winding down, catching up, David, any thoughts on the, before we wind down to backstage? we got the questions coming in. Thank you guys for sending the questions. To, uh, uh, go ahead, David. Yeah. Muted. Sorry. We lost him. I uh, thought you were saying Davy. So. Oh, no, David. <clears throat> yeah. It, the Middle East is in trouble. We're, man, everything. My worry is, uh, is that the, during this time, if, if the Jews have a civil war, will it be time for a strike on them by the, 
by not only those that are internally enemies, but the external enemies feeling that this is it. So God forbid the ice that happens. So, but great review, Jacob. Yeah, you know, as, as, as Jacob's always quoting this part of scripture, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Amen. And of course, the concern is always, obviously, the, the believers in Israel, the gospel being preached in Israel, which Moriel is heavily involved in, and by God's grace, will continue to do so. Uh, but the political landscape, Jacob, you talked about it even last year or the year before, is changing in Israel rather rapidly rather rapidly and especially after the elections and judiciary reform reform it, it's becoming very difficult and of course even in the knesset you have uh the the, the right wing extreme right wing being a very anti-messianic believers so it, it is changing and it's becoming more difficult but by god's grace we'll continue on so thank you guys for being on catching up We'll be moving on to the backstage to deal with a couple of things which is it'll be the world coin and UBI universal basic income and of course the uh, did they really find the ancient city of so cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, we'll ask Jacob what this archaeologist had to say. Uh, it's a pretty interesting video that we that they put out, and uh, we'll be dealing with the questions as well. So God bless you guys. We'll be jumping yeah. out of Facebook Live and YouTube, and we'll be heading out to, of course, if you're already on Rumble, stay there. If you're not on Rumble yet, get there. If you're not on Morial.tv, get there. If you're not on MorialTV.org, get there. If you're on Instagram, uh, not Instagram, we're not doing Instagram. Uh, Telegram, Telegram and Vimeo. Uh, I suppose you can stay there, but join us on the other platforms that are friendly to us as well. So they let us say what we need to say. So God bless you guys. We'll see you on backstage in just a couple of minutes. Hello, and thank you for watching Moriel TV. There are so many things that are happening at Moriel Ministries worldwide, from the Philippines to Japan to India to Africa and back to Europe and the United States, so many of our brothers and sisters are spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to this lost world. We are so thankful for your prayers. God has been faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. If you'd like to partner with our efforts abroad and at home, please take a moment to click the link in the description and help us as the Lord leads you. Thank you very much and God bless.